Greetings, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show, Real Talk, Real People. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin, and today I have the awesome pleasure of sitting with my friend, Mr. Michael Jerome Powell. How are you, Michael? I'm great. How are you doing, Barbara? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. So for many people, I'm sure they've heard your name, you know, Michael Powell, the uh, music producer, uh, was a member of Chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've produced music for so many people, mm -hmm. but what I'm going to do is I like to share with people how we met. So, you know, back in the day when Chapter 8 was at Henry's Cocktail yeah. Lounge, yeah. my girlfriend Rosemary introduced me to your mother right. at first, and then uh, you and I became friends. Uh, I shared that uh, I was first person to give you a jerry curl. <laughs> <laughs> Say, and then I gave yeah. your mother a curl, yeah. her friends yeah. a curl. I believe that my daughter does hair yeah. today yeah. because I was the Jerry Curl yeah, Queen. <laughs> Say, yeah, so um, we're going to talk today about just the music business, okay. just a little bit about your passion. I want people to know who you are. Mm -hmm. They know all the great things that you've done, mm -hmm. but I want people to know how you got started. So my first question to you is, did you always know I mean, when you were young, that this is what you wanted to do? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, I really didn't get interested in, into music till about, mm, I'm going to say maybe 11 years old, okay. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but turning into a producer was never in my sight because I didn't know what a producer was. Okay. You know, uh, I just wanted to play guitar and uh, get in a band some mm -hmm. kind of way or something like that, you know. I wanted to play keyboards, mm -hmm. and my brother was in the Army, and he sent money home for my mom to buy me a keyboard. Okay. And my mother said, we can't afford to buy you, we're going to take this money and buy you some shoes. <laughs> I know, that's right. <laughs> so I didn't get the keyboard, mm -hmm. and uh, my uh, cousin from Chicago came, he was a guitar player, and he left one of his guitars, uh, at my house okay. when he left. So I just picked the guitar up mm -hmm. and just started, you know, messing around with it and eventually taught myself how to play. And that's what I was going to say. A lot of people probably don't know. So you really never, did you eventually start taking lessons no, or you taught never yourself? Took, never took lessons. I went to take uh, some lessons mm -hmm. uh, at some point in my, in my career and get the guitar player was asking me to show him stuff. Wow. I said, okay, this is not going to work for me. I'm not learning anything. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I basically taught myself. That That is awesome. That is awesome. So you taught yourself how to play guitar. And then how did uh, Chapter 8, because uh, that was, was that like the first, well, the pro first professional thing that you did was Chapter 8? Uh, well, yes, uh, actually the second. The first mm -hmm. one was uh, uh, David Washington and I mm -hmm. and my brother who had, uh, just come back from the army. Okay. Was a singer. Okay. And uh, we formed a little thing, and we performed at the Raven Lounge over on Shane. Okay. That's, ooh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Telling your age. Yeah. All and right. uh, uh, we would do little shows here and there. You know, we had our little uh, devil knit outfits on, okay. looking like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, that was like the first thing we okay. did. Uh, we didn't really make a lot of money from it. And then David and I uh, got some guys together and formed Chapter 8. Okay. And that's how that came about. All right. And so Chapter 8, and Chapter 8 before before Anita Baker. It yes. was always Chapter 8. Absolutely. Okay. And well, then, before that, we were called, <laughs> we were looking for a name, uh -huh. and we called ourselves the Juicers. <laughs> The juicers? <laughs> the juicers. Okay. Don't ask me why. I know, that's right. <laughs> the guy that was managing us uh, <laughs> at the time, uh, he said, oh, we're going to call you guys the juicers. And I'm like, oh, uh, I don't think so. Okay. You know. Well, you know, hey, back then, you know, people probably weren't thinking because juicing is a good thing. Yeah, today. exactly. <laughs> Everybody is right. juicing. So yep. the juicers <laughs> might make it today, you know, where they weren't uh, right. making it back then. Right. And then you brought Anita into the, how did, how did, you know, what made you guys, you guys already have your band, you're already right. playing, and so what made you bring Anita in? Well, we, we actually had other singers mm -hmm. um, before Anita. We had Carolyn Crawford, okay, who uh, sang that everybody get up on and dance with Bohannon. Mm -hmm. That's right. her. Okay. Uh, we had a girl, um, 
uh, Joyce Love, I think that was her name. Mm -hmm. Barbara Love, that okay. was her name. Okay. And um, uh, maybe a couple of more singers. And then um, we were playing at a club um, on the east side mm -hmm. uh, called the Cabaret Lounge. Okay. Matt Miller was the owner there, and we were working there. And we worked there like five days a week, you mm -hmm. know. And we decided we we're going to take a little time off. And uh, he brought another band in. Okay. And Anita was singing with that band okay. with another uh, female singer. And uh, David went over to the club one night mm -hmm. and uh, he saw Anita sing. She only sang one or two songs mm -hmm. all night long. Mm -hmm. She was like a little background singer. Okay. And uh, David saw her and he came back to us. He said, man, you got to go over here and hear this girl. She's bad. She's bad. Mm -hmm. So we went over and saw her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she was just singing a little one little song and she sounded great. She had a different kind of voice, right, you know, so right. uh and she could sing. So uh after, you know, she came off stage, we just asked her, You wanna sing with chapter eight? <laughs> she was like, Chapter eight. Okay. Yeah, I wanna <laughs> sing with chapter eight. Know, and we were right. like, us and Brainstorm were the hottest bands right. in Detroit, you know. See, and I remember in Chapman, I mean just anytime like anytime I hear uh Gloria or whatever, right. I always picture you know, because they were at Henry's, you right. were at Henry's, yep. always pictured them being there with you. So, um, with with uh, with Anita, then you started to to write music. Let's let's talk about how did you get into going from you know you got your band, right. you have your you know your music. Right. How did you start writing? I mean, and when you write, where does your lyrics come from? Tell me about. Well, that. you know, I I, I write um, two ways. Mm -hmm. I can write with the guitar mm -hmm. and then come up with the lyrics. Okay. Or I may come up with a melody or a hook, mm -hmm. then I'll put the music to it. Okay. You know, um, one of the early songs that I wrote was um, uh, I Just Will Be Your Girl. Mm -hmm. I wrote that. Okay. And um, I know a lot of women ask me that. How you write a song about I Just Want to Be Your Girl? Right. <laughs> you know, and I, I've always known that women uh, bought most of the music, mm -hmm. you know. So I was just trying to write something that I thought Would women... Would appeal to them. Exactly. Okay. You know, and I'm always thinking that way, you know. And uh, I was right. I mean, women love that song, most you know. Definitely. And um And I just, I did that, and I did uh, a song called... Um, uh, I Need Love, okay. the Gerald Lyle song okay. on Chapter 8. Okay. And it's just another song that appeals to women. But I just, you know, however it comes to me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a melody or a lyric or a hook or just something musically that sounds great, I say, oh, I like this, and I'll just put words to it. So for the people who write today, because you said something, you know, you thought about who your audience was going to be, mm -hmm. you know, prior to you making that. You you mm -hmm. know that women are making, uh, buying the music, mm -hmm. so you were thinking about appealing to the women. So do you think that, like, I'm, I'm just listening to all of the music, that, if we talk about rap, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you know, do you think that they're doing that today, that they think about who's going to buy their music when they put it out? Well, yeah, I think they, they do think about that, mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, they don't really have any uh, real discretion about what they're saying mm -hmm. in, the, in today's music. You know right. what I'm saying? I mean, for a minute there, and I mean, even still now, um, people are making songs and you never hear the word love. Right. But they're supposed to be love songs, but they, don't, they never say love. Right. You know, right. they talk about sex and, you know, what they're going to do and what they want you to do to them. And, yes. you know, and they'll even say, I don't love you. Mm. But I want to get with you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But listen to this love song. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's sad. So um, kind of like what advice, I mean, you know, like people, there are a lot of people, and I think mm -hmm. that because we're getting away from music, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the good old Frankie Beverly Absolutely. Chapter 8 enchantment, Absolutely. you know, uh, 
B.B. King even yeah. made. I mean, That's you know, right. you think about right. the blues. I right. mean, you know, do we have any blues singers today? I mean, other yeah, than we do. newer ones coming up. Not really, no. Uh -huh. We don't. Yeah, because it's like people are getting away from that. But that was music. People are not making real music today. So, you know, we thank God for producers mm -hmm. like you, for musicians mm -hmm. like you who, you know, still bring real music mm -hmm. to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Now, I know recently you did something with Aretha, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I've the been queen working with Aretha for Aretha over, over 10 years now. I know. You know. But I saw you guys, like, it seemed like not long ago, she was coming up with, I think, with her latest, her last album or something mm -hmm. that she came up mm -hmm. when you were doing something mm -hmm. with her on mm -hmm. that. Yep. Okay. Yep. The queen of soul. She's right. always been the queen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And always will be. What do you think? What advice do you have for people that want to be in the music business? What would you tell well, them? I would say, first of all, like anything else, that you want to be good at. You got to study, study your craft mm -hmm. and, and try to master it. Um, you know, they say it takes uh, 10,000 hours to get good at anything, okay. you know, and y that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it really is a lot of time okay. uh, to put into something, you know, and you got to be passionate about music. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what's happening today with kids is that Technology has made it so easy mm -hmm. to make beats. Okay. You know, right. they don't say I make music. Right. If you talk to the average person in the music business, I, I, I make beats. Okay. You know, and that's what they do. They make beats. They have machines that you can press one button mm -hmm. and practically make a song. Right. So they you don't. Know. They don't really know the craft. They, they don't know beats. the craft. They okay. don't. They don't study music. You know. Um, I've been working with Aretha for a long time, and I've seen producers come in that had hit records uh -huh. that came in to work with Aretha, and Aretha would tell them, um, that key is too low for me. We got to bring the key up. Mm -hmm. And they would look at me like, How do you do that? what is she talking <laughs> okay. about? I said, you got to bring the pitch up. Okay. What is that? You got to make the pitch higher. Mm -hmm. You got to take it up a few steps so she can sing it and it feel comfortable key. doing mm -hmm. it. And they wouldn't know what I was talking about wow. because they sampled mm -hmm. the music, you know, okay. and just put a beat over it. Okay. So they really couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. But they have machines now that can even do that, okay. you know, and keep the same tempo and change the pitch. Mm. So they're making it so easy, but that doesn't make you master the craft. Exactly. Okay. You don't evolve into a great producer mm -hmm. or a, a songwriter, okay. you know, and People are in their basement and they're making little beats and they think they mastered the world, mm -hmm. you know. But outside of that, when you go to do something uh, that's going to challenge your skills, right. you don't have the skills. Mm -hmm. So you miss out on great opportunities because you're not prepared, exactly. you know. So you always got to be prepared. Music is always evolving. It's always changing every day. Mm -hmm. New technology, this, that, and the other. But you have to... Uh, if you're going to be a musician, you got to study. You can't just pick up an instrument and just start playing and be good at mm -hmm. it. You okay. know, there are people, there are prodigies that God knows why they can do it. Right. They do sit down at the piano and just start playing. Right, right. You know, but if you're not gifted like that, guess what? You're going to have to study. Most definitely, most definitely. And I think that is uh, key because. When, when, you know, when you talk about, you know, somebody, you know, having that beat, you know, you can mm -hmm. go someplace and you could do your beat and people are out there dancing mm -hmm. and they could dance for your beat or whatever. But like you said, if somebody's coming in and they're asking you to make some alterations to that right. beat, exactly. how do you do that? Because right. all you're used to is downloading that beat to That's one right. thing you don't know about, you know, you the synthesizer. Like, right. I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I'm right. just saying, but you know, right. you have to move those keys up and down to get that pitch to get it right. right. Make sure it doesn't squeal. Make sure that equilibrium is going up and down right. and stuff right. like that. Like, I really know something <laughs> about music. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so um, of all the things you, you've, you've, you, you're a musician. You did a little background singer too mm -hmm. when you were in Chapter mm -hmm. 8. Yep. You know, you produce and for of all the things that you've done, you know, you had your own studio and mm -hmm. you still are do you produce now under D Town? What's your D Town is my record label. Record label. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So of all the things that you've done, what is the most fulfilling for you? Mm. Production. Okay. Production. Okay. Uh I like producing because uh it's like 
your television show. Okay. It it starts with nothing. Mm -hmm. Then you bring in cameras. You okay. bring in the lights. Okay. You know you build your set, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's a building process until you create the finished product. Exactly. And when you see it back, you say, wow, that's wow. a really nice show, you know. So it, it, it fulfills you in a way uh, from taking nothing okay. to something, All right. All you know. Right. And, and then uh, you get your feedback mm -hmm. on the Internet. People say, oh, I like your show, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So you get you're getting that feedback and the appreciation of your work that okay. you put into it. Okay. It just doesn't happen. Right. You have to make it happen. Right. Right. You know, definitely. And, and the way it look and the sound, mm -hmm. uh, it's all uh, calculated, right. you know. Right. So. So, Mike, you've been doing this for how many years now? Wow. I want to say 40 years. Wow. That's a long time. That's a long time. But it's it, it's also, you know, the great thing about it, you've been doing it from for a long time, and mm -hmm. I guess you could be, and I, I, I hope I'm going to get this right, uh, yeah. like Drake, you started from the bottom, now you're here. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> whoever, whoever that's just right, that that's song. right. You know, because you started, you know, because somebody left a guitar at your house, mm -hmm. and then you picked it up and mastered yeah. the guitar. Mm -hmm. And not only, I'm talking about mastered it in a way that it has taking you all over the world. You've mm -hmm. been blessed, yeah. you know, by that music. Yes. You know, you've been able to travel the world. Mm -hmm. You've worked with some of the best people. Mm -hmm. You know, you ate at Roscoe's Waffles <laughs> and Chicken. <laughs> you've been, uh, you know, I just think about when you took uh, OBF, Ordinary Black Folk, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to give them some props. Right. They told me to tell you, and right. I said it on camera, yep. so they That's know right. that That's I right. told you. Right. They're ready to do some work, yep. so they said yep. call them, yep. okay? Uh, when they went to Boca Raton, and mm -hmm. they were in the uh, in the uh, the competition that what, what, right. whatever it had. Right, the conference, music yeah. conference. Uh -huh. And I've been to your studio and see you work with people, how, you know, I mean, you're like a, a personal training coach, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you, they got to get it right, you right. know? And, and what... I love even, you know, my daughter always says, you taught her the craft, mm -hmm. you know, how to come into a room and command their mm -hmm. presence, mm -hmm. you know, and how to keep people engaged, you right. know, all throughout their performing mm -hmm. and whatever, you know. So that is in mastering your craft. I mean, what, once you became a producer, what was the, because you produced on Chapter 8, but once you, like, when you had your studio and, when you went in there, did you watch somebody or you just walked in there, you knew what you wanted to do and you became good at it? How did? Well, uh, the way I became a producer was um, when uh, Chapter 8 wanted to record, mm -hmm. we were signed to a production company and they wanted to get a producer for us and they was telling me about this guy who was a producer, a local producer, mm -hmm. who had records on the radio. Okay. And I remember hearing these guys' records, and they were horrible. <laughs> and I said, I don't want that guy producing okay. us. Right. And they said, well, look, just meet with the guy, you know, and after you meet with him, if you like what he's talking about, maybe he can do something for you. And so we're sitting down talking to the guy, and the guy says, you know, I'll produce you, and I'll do this, and da 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 And, uh, uh, you know, maybe the second or third album, you can produce yourself, because... Who knows what you want to sound like better than you? Right. And I said, what? Why? What did you just <laughs> okay. say? All right. I said, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I left that meeting. I went back to the company. I said, this guy's not going to do it for us. Because okay. I know what I want to sound like better than he knows what I want to sound like. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, so I told him, I said, well, can we get Maurice White to produce us? <laughs> <laughs> We're Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. I said, we can't afford Maurice White. <laughs> Think it be. You're right, think it may. Right. Be. You know, and then uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Michael Henderson was okay. hot at the time. Right. I said, well, maybe Mike can produce it. <laughs> we can't afford Mike Henderson, mm -hmm. you know. I said, well, he said, well, look, you guys go in there and see what you can do, and we'll see how it works out, you know. And so we went in, and I really depended on the engineer okay. to help me, okay. just to tell me what we shouldn't what to do because you just can't go in the studio just knowing what to do. Right. Somebody that knows Has what to, to know do more or how. Than you. Absolutely. Right. You know. And so uh uh the reason why I became a producer when we were doing things, I was like really on top of it. When it was time to go, 
I didn't want to leave. Okay. You know, I was there. Can okay. I hang around? Okay. You know, I just wanted to learn more and more. I was just fascinated by the equipment and, okay. and all of that, you know. And uh, I just learned it and just got better and better and better, you know. Okay. Well, that's good. So I, as, as you were talking, you know, I was thinking about Chapter 8, and I just want you to give a shout out to, you know, you said that Jay was at your party. So let's talk about the original members in, of Chapter 8, and then we're going to get back on your thing, because I want you to make sure that you call each and every one's right, name right. that's in the group that still, you know, you right, still have a relationship right. with. Uh, so. Sam Burns, uh -huh. uh, David Washington, these guys were at my party also, okay. Martin Stewart. Okay. Uh, uh, Scott Guthrie, mm -hmm. he came to the party, All right. um, and uh, when I said Jay, I meant L.J. Reynolds. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jay okay. is in North Carolina. Okay, okay, okay. L.J., uh, all right. But we are talking about trying to do uh, a reunion of Chapter 8. Okay, you know? don't forget your drummer. Oh, Derek Dirk. Okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, I was going to say that Valerie... Mm -hmm. uh, will be here in June. Okay. With, she sings with uh, Diana Ross. All right. Yeah, she sang with Luther for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Now she's singing with Diana Ross. Because Valerie came in after Anita, right? After Anita, yeah. right. Yeah. So she sung on uh, two subsequent albums after okay. Anita. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that's wonderful. Now, if, like, people that are out, you know, how do they engage? I mean, you know, because now... Mike Powell is like when you were asking way back in the day, well, can Mike Henderson do it? Can Maurice mm -hmm. White do mm -hmm. it? You know, I know a lot of people probably can't afford right. a Mike Powell, but right. how do you engage a producer when you, you know, when you want to have somebody produce your music? Mm -hmm. How do you engage? Them? Well, first of all, you got to figure, okay, what kind of music am I doing? And um, is this person capable of bringing out the best in what we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. You know, as a producer, my job is to bring out the best in everybody, okay. all the singers, all the musicians, mm -hmm. the best in the song, the best arrangement. You know, I, I need to uh, bring everything up to the to the next level. Um, if you're seeking out a producer, like if someone wanted to work with me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm available. OK. You know, uh, my email address is. Michael J. Powell, mm -hmm. 44, mm -hmm. at msn.com. Okay. And I can be reached through my, through my email. All right. Uh, but uh, you have to understand that when you uh, get a producer, you have to have a budget, a mm -hmm. recording budget. Okay. You got to go into the studio. You got to pay musicians. Mm -hmm. You got to pay an engineer. Mm -hmm. You know. Nothing's free, right? So make sure that you are are, are funded because you can only do as much as your money can do for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if you have no money, you have no production. Exactly. You can't produce it. Exactly. You know. Uh, so, um, you know, there are producers around, uh, young guys coming up mm -hmm. that that are good. Okay. You know. So tell me this. I'm gonna ask you. I'm probably gonna put you on the spot when I ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Who was the worst person you ever worked with? Ooh, <laughs> I'm still alive, and they're still alive. Oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> well, okay. Well, maybe you can't. Yeah. Well, that'll be an after the show. Right. You know, we'll do. Right. We'll do like uh, the Atlanta Housewives right. Right after the show exactly. series. You know, exactly. 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 You know, I was talking to Quincy Jones one time, and mm -hmm. Quincy, I was telling Quincy, you know, I was having some issues with certain people, you know, and he said, Michael, he said, don't worry about it, man. He said, when they get to that level, mm -hmm. they're all problems. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just get the money and uh -huh. make the best record you can make. Okay. You know, and that was, that was some good advice he gave me because, right. you know, I, I have a very low tolerance for Nonsense. Uh -huh. You know, music is supposed to be fun. Exactly. And when you start bringing that drama and all them egos into the picture, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't fare well with that. Right, you know. Right. And I want to walk away. But if there's an opportunity to make something great exactly. from it, exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll stand, stand, and, and, and that's make what it happen. I was that's what I was going to say, because at the end of the day, when your name is on it, Absolutely. then you're going to make sure that that Absolutely. is a quality product yeah. that you put out. Yeah, because I tell people all the time that um, when you're recording music, it's 
forever. Okay. You know, yes. I, I saw an uh, interview in Rolling Stone magazine. It was another proud moment in my career. Mm -hmm. And it, it was the world's greatest 100 albums ever recorded. Okay. And Rapture was one of those wow. albums okay. in the history of music. Wow. And that just blew my mind, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it let me know that I'm doing something right. Right. You know definitely. what I'm saying? Most when definitely. you sell millions of records, you're saying, millions of people are saying, I like what you did. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So. Well, you know, a half hour is never enough time, and you and I could talk all day. All cause day. We, we have like about 30 some odd years. So, I, right. For, I just want you to look into this camera, and mm -hmm. I want you to kind of speak to some young girl, some young guy that's mm -hmm. out there that has a interest in doing something, and they don't want to know. They don't know exactly what to do. Just from your heart and all that mm -hmm. you've been through, just kind of encourage somebody today if you can. Well, what I would say uh, to anybody, singer, rapper, musician, is to study uh, your craft. Listen to records, read books, read books, read books. You know, uh, you can learn how to do anything on the internet. Uh, so you just have to do your research and study and stay true to your passion. You gotta love it. If you love it, you'll probably be really good at it because you will it'll, you'll strive to get better and better and better. So, uh, and always keep God first. Amen. Always let him guide your path and you'll never go wrong. Amen. So, I, okay. again, thank you. I am going to have to end the show like I always do, thanking my public, my fans for tuning in and looking at it. Hopefully I brought you something that will bless you and I'm going to say to you from my beating heart to your beating heart, I love you. You understand? Okay. <laughs>